You know the story of Nettie Asbury. You should. She was a leader in the black community, a suffragette, a musician, and a music teacher, an artist, the recipient of a college degree, and an icon for this city. For us, her story is rooted here, in this unassuming house. Nettie and her husband lived right here in Tacoma from 1903 until 1966. This house has been a part of Tacoma for generations. It was built in 1887, when Tacoma was young and Washington wasn't even yet a state. But its greatest achievement has been serving as a refuge, a music studio, a classroom, and a home to our very own Nettie Asbury. Nettie Asbury was born in Leavenworth, Kansas on July 15, 1865. She was the only free child born to Violet Craig. Her father, William Wallingford, was the man who owned the plantation on which Violet was an enslaved woman. Nettie was from the start of her life destined to challenge the oppressive system and to nurture hope in a world that desperately needed it. She learned to play piano at eight and by 13 was involved in the women's suffrage movement. At one point, she even served as the secretary of the Susan B. Anthony Club. Her first husband died in 1893. Her family eventually made their way to the Pacific Northwest where she married Henry Joseph Asbury in 1895. They set down roots here and became indispensable members of the community. When they moved into this house in 1903, they lived here together until Henry died in 1939, and Nettie continued to occupy the home until 1966. It was here that she gave music lessons. She quickly became the organist and choir director for the Allen AME Church after landing in Tacoma and grew a reputation as a talented musician. She established the Mozart Musical Club for young people in Tacoma with the intention of helping them foster a love for music and to help them broaden their musical knowledge by introducing them to other musical cultures. Her home had a massive upright piano in the music room and was the center for up to 45 recitals a year. Nettie's students were an incredible representation of the various cultures in Tacoma at that time. And over the years, she's taught hundreds of students from Tacoma's communities. Nettie worked hard to combat injustice and to be a voice for those who didn't have one. She was as talented with a pen as she was with the keys, and when she wasn't playing or teaching music, she was often writing to newspaper editors protesting racial discrimination and advocating for social equality. In 1913, she founded the Tacoma chapter of the NAACP. Her first act was to mobilize a caravan that went to the state legislator and shut down a measure that would have prevented interracial marriage in Washington. When the controversial and racist film, Birth of a Nation, was coming to Tacoma in 1915, Nettie sprung into action. Her letter of protest was published in the Tacoma Ledger and led the charge to see the film banned from Tacoma. It is considered to be one of the most important documents in Tacoma's civil rights history. It was one of her many stands against inequality here. She fought to have Fort Lewis desegregated, to ensure that black Americans could vote, and led a campaign to see that black history was taught in our schools. Her activism was incredible, and she remained a vigilant champion of social justice for the 75 years she lived in Tacoma. Her house is a symbol of these times. It resides here in the Hilltop neighborhood. The Nettie Asbury House has been purchased by the Tacoma City Association of Colored Women's Club, the very same organization that Nettie founded here in Tacoma, one that has worked tirelessly over generations to advocate for social justice in the area. This nonprofit organization purchased the home with funding from State of Washington and has begun the intensive process of restoring this home to its former glory. They intend to convert it from a rental property into a cultural center and a museum. It is now also an officially recognized Tacoma City landmark. It will be a big job to restore this house, taking about two years and requiring the TCA CWC to stabilize the foundation and restore the interior. When it's finished though, they hope to host outdoor concerts again, 
just like Nettie once did. When the lights come back on here, they will be a beacon, like Nettie was, guiding the way for people who want to create a better life. Nettie Asbury worked tirelessly to promote a more fair and just world, one full of beauty, equality, and of course, music. After 103 years of an incredible life of work promoting racial equality and artistic achievement, Nettie Asbury passed away in 1968. Today, the Tacoma City Association of Colored Women's Club and Nettie's very own house will carry on the legacy of working tirelessly to make Tacoma a better place tomorrow than it was today. <laughs>